Welcome to Micro, a podcast for short but powerful writing. I'm your host, Drew Hawkins. Drums and dewdrops, white moths and waves. They're great, they're late, and their words still echo among us. With pieces selected by our very own May May Kaufman, please enjoy our first Late Greats episode. We have five pieces for you today, some you may know and some you may not. But before we get into the show, here's May May to talk a little bit about her choices for this episode. Hey there, this is May May Kaufman. I usually keep to social media for my grow, but if you know me like Drew and Dylan do, then you know that I love all things dead. So naturally, I had to curate an episode with pieces by incredible, and incredibly dead, authors. The greatest part for me was hearing these works come back to life with this fantastic group of readers. I was hoping we'd have an Emily Dickinson poem in this episode, and Amy Lyons did not disappoint when she asked to read one about funerals and mourning, again, two of my great interests. More than a decade ago in undergrad, I was assigned the task of reciting a poem for my teacher that instantly became my favorite W.B. Yeats poem because it captured the creative spark and drive of writing. Now I'm turning the tables, and that professor and very talented poet herself, Rachel Truesdale, is going to read that poem for you. I want to thank Josh Hagee for introducing me to Robert Herrick's poem, Dreams, a small but mighty discovery. As I mentioned, I'm so thrilled that one of these readers is my favorite professor, but another one is my favorite spouse. Okay, I've only gotten married once, but Jade Hawk is still my favorite. Fun fact, he has a tattoo of the last line of the Kobayashi haiku, and it might be one reason I fell head over heels for him like I did. And what would a late great episode be without our queen, Virginia Woolf? This poem, Blue and Green, and hearing Daniel Duroc read it are a full sensory experience. They're late, they're great, and live for your listening pleasure. Enjoy. Thank you, Maymay. Our first piece, titled I Felt a Funeral in My Brain, was written by Emily Dickinson and brought to us by Amy Lyons. Enjoy. I felt a funeral in my brain, and mourners to and fro kept treading, treading, till it seemed that sense was breaking through. And when they all were seated as service, like a drum, kept beating, beating, till I thought my mind was going numb. And then I heard them lift a box and creak across my soul. With those same boots of lead again, then space began to toll. As all the heavens were a bell and being but an ear, and I in silence some strange race wrecked solitary here. And then a plank in reason broke, and I dropped down and down and hit a world at every plunge, and finished knowing. Then... Amy Lyons writes fiction and nonfiction. You can find her on Twitter at AmyKLY, on Instagram at AmyLyons9112, or on her website at AmyLyonsWriter.com. In our second piece, Josh Hagee reads Robert Herrick's brief yet expansive poem, Dreams. Enjoy. Dreams by Robert Herrick Here we are all by day. By night, we're hurled by dreams, each one into a several world. Josh Hagee is a writer and high school English teacher from Western Virginia who spends his spare time in search of the perfect taco. You can find him on Twitter and Instagram at the underscore Hagee 23. Our third piece is The Song of Wandering Angus by William Butler Yeats and read by Rachel Trousdale. Enjoy. The Song of Wandering Angus by William Butler Yeats I went out to the hazel wood because a fire was in my head and cut and peeled a hazel wand and hooked a berry to a thread and when white moths were on the wing 
and moth-like stars were flickering out, I dropped the berry in a stream and caught a little silver trout. When I had laid it on the floor, I went to blow the fire aflame, but something rustled on the floor and someone called me by my name. It had become a glimmering girl with apple blossom in her hair who called me by my name and ran and faded through the brightening air. Though I am old with wandering through hollow lands and hilly lands, I will find out where she has gone, and kiss her lips, and take her hands, and walk among long dappled grass, and pluck till time and times are done the silver apples of the moon, the golden apples of the sun. Rachel Trousdale is a poet and professor who teaches at Framingham State University. Her latest book is called Humor, Empathy, and Community in 20th Century American Poetry. You can find her on Twitter at RV Trousdale or on her website at racheltrousdale.com. In this next piece, Jade Hawk lends his voice to Kobayashi Issa's haiku, This Dewdrop World. Enjoy. This Dewdrop World is a dewdrop world. And yet, And yet... Jade Hawk is a meat popsicle. You can find him on his website at thepeoplespppe.org. Read by Daniel DeRock, our final piece is from the late, great Virginia Woolf, titled Blue and Green. Enjoy. Green. The pointed fingers of glass hang downwards. The light slides down the glass and drops a pool of green. All day long, the ten fingers of the luster drop green upon the marble. The feathers of parakeets, their harsh cries, sharp blades of palm trees, green too. Green needles glittering in the sun. But the hard glass drips onto the marble. The pools hover above the desert sand. The camels lurch through them. The pools settle on the marble. Rushes edge them, weeds clog them. Here and there, a white blossom. The frog flops over. At night, the stars are set there unbroken. Evening comes, and the shadow sweeps the green over the mantelpiece, the ruffled surface of ocean. No ships come. The aimless waves sway beneath the empty sky. It's night. The needles drip blots of blue. The green's out. Blue. Blue. The snub-nosed monster rises to the surface and spouts through his blunt nostrils two columns of water, which, fiery white in the center, spray off into a fringe of blue beads. Strokes of blue line the black tarpaulin of his hide. Slushing the water through mouth and nostrils, he sinks, heavy with water, and the blue closes over him, dousing the polished pebbles of his eyes. Thrown upon the beach, he lies, blunt, obtuse, shedding dry blue scales. Their metallic blue stains the rusty iron on the beach. Blue are the ribs of the wrecked rowing boat. A wave rolls beneath the blue bells. But the cathedral's different, cold, incense-laden, faint blue with the veils of Madonna's.
Daniel de Rock is an American fiction writer living in the Netherlands, whose work has appeared, among other places, in Rejection Letters, Gone Lawn, and Reservoir Road. You can find him on Twitter at Daniel underscore de Rock. And with that, we lay the show to rest. This episode was specially curated by May May Kaufman, edited by Dylan Evers, and produced and hosted by me, Drew Hawkins. Our theme song is by Matt Ordez. In addition to curating the show, May May Kaufman also runs our social media. You can find us on LitHub, our website at micropodcast.org, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Also be sure to check out our interview series with Kirsten Renault called Five Cues with Kirsten. She sits down and talks to writers featured on the show about their work. We've got a full transcript of this episode up on our website, and if you need subtitles, you can find them on our YouTube page, which you can find links to on our website as well. Subscribe to the show and leave a review, please, and be sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Podcast Micro. Thanks for listening.